Hi everybody, today we have Arte por Lola or Paola Lagunas joining us. I'm just waiting for her to get on the live. Hi! Hi! Hi. How are you? Good, I'm so nervous though. Oh, uh, why? <laughs> I don't know, the nerves just like creeped up in like the last two minutes and I was like, oh man. <laughs> You're like, am I ready? Am I ready? Am I ready? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, we're in for a smooth ride, girl. So, uh, okay. yeah, we got to just <laughs> take it off. So, thank you to everybody who joined. This is our beautiful artist, Arte por Lola, or Paola Laguna. Aww. She is an amazing surrealist artist who specializes in acrylic work, right? Yeah. It's okay. Acrylic. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I guess we can start off by like going over your background and you introducing yourself, like where you come from, what yeah. got you into art, things like that. Yeah. So my name is Paola Lagunas. I was born in Michoacán. So I was actually born in the capital of Michoacán. And then I moved to a little town right there, which is where my family was. And I had a sister and a little brother. And when I was uh, five passed away, which then my mom kind of wanted to move to the U.S. because she thought she'd have a better chance at doing it on her own out here. Yeah. So she came out here and she moved to Idaho, and she still lives in Idaho with her sister. Oh wow! I didn't yeah. know that. They all live over there. There's like four sisters. One of them still lives in Mexico, but they all mm -hmm. live over there, and. Yeah, they're they all of their families are over there. My sister's actually visiting right now. Like, oh, so that's nice. Yeah. That's so nice. We haven't like we haven't seen her since Christmas, so it was like such a long time. Wow. Yeah. What? Especially with quarantine right now, things are like so slow. Yeah. Like the only reason I got to go is because someone messaged me and said, "Hey, I'm driving." So if you want to drive with me, I was like, honestly, yeah, because I don't want to fly. So like, we like same, <laughs> right? <laughs> but then I moved to the Bay Area in 2015. Uh, I actually got a scholarship to go to Mills College, which is an all-girls school. Oh wow! And I was studying science and math, and I did that for a year, and I was just like exhausted. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so hard. This is too much. Like. Everyone in college was kind of like having fun, and I was like staying up all night trying to do the work. Working. Oh. Yeah. I was just like so tired. So I was like, I'm going to move back, but I'm not going to tell my mom that I'm going to not go back to school. Wow. And so I like, because I was like, she's not going to let me. She's going to be like, oh no, you're staying here and you're like doing everything here. And I'm like, we're not going to tell her. <laughs> you're like, let me just. Stay quiet about this. And one. I like convinced my sister, I was like, you should come with me because she was graduating high school. So she was like, yeah, sure, I'll come. And so That's she came crazy. with me and we got an apartment with some friends. And then we've been at the apartment ever since. And this is like where I started my art. This is where I like started everything just because I was so inspired. Like the Bay Area, there's art everywhere. Yeah. Definitely in the small town that I grew up there was not art everywhere or the art was like very specific art the I feel like, you're not not a lot of like creative freedom yeah no no it's like yeah and it's all kind of like white male artists that come out of there like I'm like <laughs> used, to go white there, used to go right there so like that's cool but I'm not inspired by that like nothing mm -hmm. was like oh you can pursue this as a career because it was just like yeah, but that's like him, and of course, like people are gonna read it. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But now I've been in Oakland, and I've been doing art for about. Uh, I think last year was the first year that I really got into acrylic painting, to where I was mm -hmm. like, like I like this, and I painted the most pieces that I ever had. And then that's since then, beautiful. I was like, okay, I love it, and I'm gonna like paint. Gonna everything. dive in, yeah. Yeah, and now with like quarantine, I've had more time to paint than like ever before. And I'm like, this is crazy, because it's kind of what I was asking for. But I was like, this is not what I was asking for. Yeah, not like this. Right? Yeah, I, I get like, what you're saying. You're like, I want the freedom, but I don't want it like this. Right. I was like, it got too crazy. It got too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So you say you do acrylic painting, right? And you started last year or you got into it last year? 
So I got into acrylic paint more last year. I'd done um, some classes in my school before for it. Not like specifically for acrylic paint, but just like art classes where maybe we right. paint a piece or two. And so I kind of liked it. And before, in like 2016 is when I really picked up like the pencil again after not doing it for a really long time. Yeah. And I was like, what? I literally Googled, what do I draw to get better at drawing? And it said, oh. draw <laughs> and I was like, that's what we're drawing. We're drawing paint. <laughs> that's so dope. It was practice and it helped me. Yeah. I kind of learned more control of the pencil. And I was like, okay, I kind of get it. And from then on, I would go to the store and like pick out a couple of little things from a medium and try it out. And then like, I didn't like watercolor. Color pencils like made me really irritated because you have to add so much. So much. I know. It's so much layering. It is. It's so much. And so then I was like, finally with acrylic, I was like, actually, I like, I love this one. And then I started investing more in it. Did you ever try oils? I haven't tried. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. I was me like. Too. <laughs> One, someone said that you have to have really good ventilation for that, for the oils, for some of the paints, Um, I guess to just be like smelling it. And I was like, honestly, the acrylic paint smells too. Oh, so yeah. I have to have really good ventilation for that as well. Yeah. I was like, no. maybe one day I'll try it when I have more space. Maybe. Yeah, and more of like the space you need in particular for that medium. Definitely. Yeah. I try it. I've seen some people do like incredible stuff with oil. I like, know, like, dude. Wow, like it looks real. Like if, it looks I feel real. Like if you know how to really use oils, it looks so real. Like you look at it, the painting and you're like, yeah, no, it really does. I've seen, like, at some of the art shows that I've been to, I've been, like, next to people that do oils, and I'm like, this is crazy. You're like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, like, that's awesome. That's fire. So you said that you started with painting a snake, right? I, um, was, and I started just drawing snakes, but then the first painting I did was, like, of some flowers. And I was going to bring that up. I, I noticed that in your work, you do a lot of nature. Like, there's yeah. always some sort of nature involved. Why do you do that? Is there a specific reason as to that? Or does it is it just something that inspires you? Honestly, I've been, like, a huge, like, tree hugger for most of my life. <laughs> I, I was, like, 12 years old. And basically, there was a huge fire in my hometown. So the camp that I was supposed to go to got canceled. Dang. And instead, they took us to the park, and all of us were like, okay, this does not make up for a whole weekend of camping. <laughs> of take camping. Us to the park. <laughs> and they taught us, like, about ways that you can, like, help the environment. And so I learned that day, it's like, take shorter showers. And I was like, I can do that. Like, I can totally do that. Yeah. And so I went home, and I took a shorter shower. And, like, to this day, I can't be in there for, like, more than 10 minutes. I'm like, what am I doing in here? Like, this is You're like, it's too long. <laughs> long and yeah. so because of that I think I'm just like really like I respect nature so much and I'm in such awe of it and like how it always grows and like all year long I see different plants around where I live so I'm like this is so crazy and it's so cool and I just love it I love looking at it and like every time I'm you on do, a walk, you, you paint it really well like all your <laughs> sceneries you. and the flowers I'm always like oh she gets the details so on point uh, thanks you have to look at it for so long. You have to be there just, like, staring at it for so long. It's yes. Like, it's and being like, what awesome. detail do I need to add right here? It doesn't feel full in this little place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It takes me a while for sure. But, and then sometimes I'm like, this one looks really bad. It doesn't look real at all. So I have to, like, yeah. over Start the over. But I'm definitely, like, always in awe of nature. I, like, I want to do more that can help. Like, I want to have my own little garden. But right now, I, like, don't have the space for it. But like, I have a bunch of plants in my house. Oh. I have to, like, move out of my house for a little bit. And I have, <laughs> like, babysitters. I was like, yeah. I need you to babysit my plants. My plants. <laughs> hitting up people on Instagram I was like hey we like kind of know each other like 
Do, can you uh, come over and water right. my plants? Right. So it's just, it's all around me all of the time. Yeah. Where, like where my mom is, it's all nature. It's, it has a population of like 6,000 people. So there's like, it's nice. all nature. So yeah, it's all just It's just what, it's what I grew up with. So scenery. Yeah, I'm probably going to be for a long time for sure. I also noticed that you do a lot of like um, ancestry symbolism. Mm -hmm. I wanted you to talk a little bit more about that because I know that we spoke about it last night, like things that we yeah. wanted to share. I was really interested in that. When you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I totally want to know like how she yeah. incorporates it, what pieces mean the most. Right. So I'm always kind of like looking at things that kind of go back home to where I'm from and where I was born. So I always like to look up the like, uh, indigenous people that were around that area and also wow. um, uh, understand that it was like one of the areas that was very early on colonized like the city that I was born in Morelia is like one of the oldest cities in Mexico and the fact that they call it one of the oldest cities just means it was like one of the first white cities you know because they stopped calling it like, mm -hmm. civilization so I'm like mm -hmm. okay I get it like we're, this is where history starts getting wobbly and yeah. So I like to look at the animals a lot and um that go back to Mexico. So like the hummingbird, the monarch butterfly, the uh jaguar that I have in one of them. I um, love that painting. It's like I remember I had it for the show that we did in LA with Haley, the nineties show. And I was literally still painting it the night before and we were staying in like an outside yurt and I had like all of these flashlights pointing at it. Aww. If we don't finish this, like, I guess like so happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'm a big believer in like park in Parkinson's law. Like the amount you give yourself to complete a task is how long it's going to take you. So when I have a deadline, I'm like, Dang it, I hate deadlines, but like I will not stop <laughs> until like, yeah, until you're like finished with it. Yeah, but besides that, that like, oh, easy breezy, however long it takes. Yeah, but, it's a, like deadlines aren't good, not for me, but they're yeah. <laughs> Same. What's your zodiac sign? I'm an Aquarius. Oh, uh, I was gonna say I was gonna guess Pisces, but then I was like, hmm, because you know how that's right next to each other. Yeah, I was born um, January 30th, 1994. No, 96, sorry. <laughs> Same. I was, I was like, what? <laughs> um, I also wanted to talk about your point of view. So in your paintings, are you painting? Like me, for example, I paint from my perspective, but I know that there's other artists out there who paint from like a third party perspective uh -huh. or just scenes that could be seen by anybody. Do yeah. your pieces reflect your perspective or what is your viewpoint on them? Or are they all different? So I think that when I first started getting into like the landscape paintings that I do is because I was looking at uh, Henry Rousseau's work. And so he painted a bunch of landscapes of like jungles with like naked women everywhere and also like animals and stuff and he was English and he was saying that he was painting all of these paintings of in of Mexico he's like this wow. is what Mexico looks like and like he was so inspired by Mexico and he said I lived in Mexico for all this time but there's like no record of him ever being in Mexico so he might have what? been picking it up <laughs> and so when I like read that I was like honestly like I can paint whatever it is that I like want to walk into or like that I want to see Be and that's kind of the thing where the landscapes come from just from like yeah. knowing that perspective like oh I don't have to like necessarily paint something that I've seen or experienced I can like be something completely different and it still has meaning so that's kind yeah. of like that comes yeah. yeah that's really nice. I don't know if I didn't know if <laughs> go ahead <laughs> I, I said I don't know if that's the question uh oh <laughs> I think you're um hold on you're kind of frozen I'm like hopefully it doesn't keep freezing can you see me still okay. I, you're yes 
you're frozen, but I think I'm back. But in my yeah. Good. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's. Good. I'm like crap. I don't know whose <laughs> connection it is, but I just turned off my Wi-Fi, so hopefully that was the reason. Anyways. Okay. Back to you. <laughs> yeah, that did answer my question. I noticed that you also did a lot of animals, which explains like your perspective on nature and stuff. But I wanted to ask. Um, when you got into art, was it something that you felt inclined to do or was it just something that was kind of like fun for you and then it developed into a career? Like, I feel like a lot of people ask like, well, how do I know if this is for me or blah, blah, blah. And my advice is always like, well, you're going to feel it. But then there's other people who right. kind of just do it and then they feel it. How was that for yeah. you? So I kind of wanted to be an artist from a really young age. I remember when Aww. I was like in first grade, I told my mom, like, mom, everyone at school wants me to teach them how to draw like these little that I'm drawing. <laughs> that is so and cute. I, was, like, I think I'm going to start a class and I'm going to tell everybody. Oh. To <laughs> and she's like, um, you can't do that because you're like <laughs> And I was like, okay. So then I was always kind of practicing. I always have been really attracted to art supplies. <laughs> like every, okay. time, every time I'm at the store, I'm like, oh my gosh, I wanted to draw stuff, but I would get really uninspired when I would try to draw a portrait and it just like would look like crap. Yeah. And, but I think I was just like going for like way above what a beginner artist can do. And then I stopped doing it for a little bit just because when I was in high school, they kind of steered me away from it. They were oh, like, oh, okay. so you should take more of the classes so that you can get into your a family. Good you, you mean your family, right? No, the counselors. My mom, like, oh, she okay. was, but the counselors, <laughs> they were like, in order for you to get into a like really good school, maybe you should take this path. And so I kind of listened to them like having college be like the end goal and not knowing that I could do art yeah. as a career. And then I think that when I was a senior, I was put into like an art and literature class and it was all about Spanish artists. And at the end of it, we were all painting squares of different art, like movements of Spain. And so they had That's surrealism, art. they had impressionism and it wasn't like, you didn't get to pick, like it was candy. Okay. And they had cubism. And I remember I wanted, like, I was like, I want the easiest one because I just want to finish and I want to leave. <laughs> and <laughs> they gave me surrealism. And I sat there oh. like, I don't think I can come up with anything. <laughs> like, I was right. just, I was like, this seems too crazy. We were looking at, like, the Dali paintings. And I was like, this guy's tripping. Like, I don't think I can do that. And the girl I was working with, she was like, well, let's just, she was just saying things. She's like, let's put flamingos in it. Let's put like all kinds of stuff. And then it like kind of started to make more sense. And it was like all yeah. kind of connected to what we were painting. And it was a diff like definitely taking me outside of the box. And so we finished it. I think it's still up <laughs> at the school. But I remember one day I was just like sitting in front of the classroom and someone walked by who was like in the AP art class and they're like, look at that. That's really good. And I was like, oh, that's my painting. <laughs> I was like so excited. And then I've always had a calling, but sometimes I just haven't had time. And once I kind of stopped going to school, I was like, I have time to do this art thing and I have time to improve. And it yeah. was rough definitely for a while, but I'm definitely feeling more confident and comfortable with like putting my stuff out there because it definitely took some time. I had people telling me like, you should start an Instagram and you should make like 10 prints and sell them. And I was like, nobody wants that. Like, I was like, nobody wants my prints, but I, it's I, same because when I remember when I started too, I was like, 
who's gonna buy stickers like who the hell's gonna come buy right. stickers, right like you don't think about it and then no. the reality is that art is like such a huge part of the world but it I is. feel like in a way it's also very underrated like people see it as more of a hobby and not no. a lifestyle kind of definitely I think there's this quote by Toni Morrison that talks about how being an artist is like one of the most important jobs in the world because you have to like decipher so many things and explain things in so many different ways and I like love that quote so much I think it really like pushed me like yeah go ahead and be this like yeah um, like to really go fully into it yeah definitely so I'm, I'm happy that I do it now and definitely like I'm happy where it's taking me so yeah really I was gonna ask it. what what plans do you have for yourself as an artist like everybody you know obviously it's such a huge goal for you to get seen by so many people because the more exposure you have the better it is not just for yourself but because those people really honor a piece of you more so but yeah. what goals do you have as an artist and I guess as an entrepreneur too because I know that you've put out prints and things like that and they're amazing for everybody watching you guys should definitely check her freaking shop oh. out but what goals do you have for yourself as an artist so I'm in this program right now in the city called the La Cocina program and okay. it's a program that helps immigrant women and just women of color start up food related businesses so okay. I've had a plan to start like a Mexican vegan food, wine, and like art bar for a while. Ooh, I'm going. I love to cook, and I have like cooked vegan food like all the time. And we like give it to our friends. We like sell it. We sell it to our neighbors. And so we got into this program. And right now, because of COVID, everything is like on super pause. Like yeah, nothing moving forward. But we're still we have like a good team who backs us up. And so I think while being seen over here at the like online and getting seen by all of these people my end goal is to have a place that just is like a whole vibe of sensory experience whether it be visual and like sound and taste and all of it i think that's like my end goal but we'll see what that's I'm a there. beautiful goal i've never heard of anybody talk about anything like that that sounds so it's amazing like, just the same <laughs> <laughs> you're like you got the same feeling <laughs> yeah it's the same feeling I'm like I'm either cooking or I'm painting <laughs> yeah that it's either or it's still creating though and you're still using tons of color especially when you're vegan like I'm vegetarian hopefully transitioning <laughs> to vegan but the color range that you have with food is so gorgeous you're like oh I'm gonna add some tomato for the red yeah. and some basil for the green it is and like it's it's just really fun. Like I've worked in, I've been a waitress for like ten years now. Like I was started being a waitress when I was fourteen, and luckily wow, that that's crazy. Like because of that, I can be where I am today, and I can have like yeah. my. Luckily, like the wage was okay for an entry level job. Right now, servers and bartenders are suffering, but you know we're gonna get through it. And, and blessings, blessings to you. They're gonna come. <laughs> and like at the restaurant that I work for just opened like two weeks ago and right now because of the fires it's not going too good because it's so bad but hopefully it'll all turn around and um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that's awesome I'm so happy that we had the opportunity to have this whole experience with each other and especially so I can learn a little bit more about you we've been at like some shows together but we've never really <laughs> had the time to really interact because it's always so busy <laughs> it is it's, it's always, always packed but, but I definitely really enjoyed talking to you it was really yeah fun. you have such good energy you're like uh, smiling and so positive and I'm like oh I love it anyways your Instagram is at the por Lola your Twitter is I'm like it's you say Luna's one. I'm like trying to change it, but Twitter's like a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it but is. it's how spelled P O 
W and then my last name, Lagunas one. Beautiful. And then for your website, we're going to be linking it down below on the post as okay. well. For anybody out there who's lo willing to support or looking to support Surrealist Beautiful Artists, follow Aww. Liza Girl to go to. She's amazing. She does incredible work, <laughs> naturistic work, realist work. I'm all for it. <laughs> and I hope you have a beautiful day, girl. We will yes, definitely you stay do. in touch. My yes. love to you. Bye. Yes, you Bye. Thank you. Bye.